Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. What's happening up in the Arctic right now? And remember the, the saying that I came up with years ago, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. It's not like uh, Las Vegas. So right now, as I speak, there is a massive cyclone going through the Arctic Ocean Basin. It covers most of the Arctic Ocean Basin. It, it's massive. It's been churning away for a, a day or two now, and uh, it's expected to weaken over the next two, three, four days, and then actually even strengthen again. And the long-range forecasts, the, both the GFS and the ECMWF, um, the European and the US forecast model, show that the conditions in the Arctic are conducive to these sort of cyclones happening. What we're getting is we're getting a very warm surface. We're getting convection and the air is rising. It creates a low near the surface and a low pressure area. In fact, the pressure has been down to about 969 millibar. So when you have a low pressure, then air moves in from all directions because it's higher pressure all around. And because of the Coriolis force, everything's deflected to the right in the Northern Hemisphere. So the air comes in, it's deflected to the right. So you get a counterclockwise rotation. So if you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, um, this is a screen that you get. You can just scroll down. You can click on any of these items to get more detail. But what you can see here is this is, the Ar this is August 16th, the ice concentration. 100% um, are purple, then we get into the greens, 50% or so, and then we have clear areas. So what you can see is you can see the shredding of the ice. Um, it's very thin. There's no thick ice. There's nothing thicker than a meter or two. Um, and it's basically being shredded. You'll notice the ice, the ice isn't even thick up against the Canadian archipelago where it's normally piled up. So let's have a look at some other items on this. Um, so you can see the sea ice extent in various, from various sources coming down. Um, it hasn't started to really drop off, but I'll talk about that more. Um, you know, more than the trend line is what I'm saying. Um, and if I go down here, I can, we can look at some other things. There's lots of data. Um, this is sea surface temperature anomalies. So the red areas, these areas that are very dark red or brownish are four degrees uh, Celsius uh, warmer than normal. This is the sea surface temperature. Even the yellows are about up to half a degree, 0.25 to a half a degree above normal. Um, and so, so this ice is, this, this really warm water temperature is undercutting the, the very thin ice. We're also getting lots of wave action from the cyclone, um, which is breaking up the ice. And uh, so basically, you know, the ice is under, is under extreme pressure, under extreme threat right now. We still have at least a month of in the melt season. Uh, if the melt season is extended past last year, it was September 15th. That's sort of typical. Uh, if, it's, if it's more like a week later, then we'll have five weeks of melt. So, you know, how much ice will survive? I mean, that's the question. That's the question of the day, because as we lose sea ice, um, then it gets a lot darker in the Arctic. The Arctic then absorbs more solar radiation, gets a lot of heating. We get Arctic temperature amplification. Um, that lowers the temperature gradient to the equator, causes the jet streams to become slow down and become wavier. And we're seeing all of these torrential rain events. And as I pointed out in some previous videos, still controversial. Um, I, we, saw, we saw the jet stream ridges go right up into the Arctic. That's not controversial. That happened in December and also September of last year. But the jet streams coming so low that they actually join with the Southern Hemisphere jet streams. Um, I've done some work on that in the last uh, month or so, and that's still very controversial. Although, you know, ask the question, what happens when there's no sea ice, when there's no snow cover? When there's no temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator, what, do we have jet streams? They're completely f are there weak jet streams that are completely fractured? Do we have stationary weather patterns? I mean, this is what, what's happening in Louisiana right now. We're having these stationary, almost stationary weather patterns, and it just 
there's a moisture source, the Gulf, and stationary weather pattern, and it just rains continuously and floods out the uh, you know large portions of the state. I mean, we're seeing this. Many cities and places around the world are dropping from like flies from you know in this climate casino. Um, this is the um, mean uh, sea level pressure millibar. So we've got lows, like I said, we're, we've reached 969 up in here. Um, this is uh, sea level pressure, and so we've got a low here, we've got a low here, we've got a low here. Like I said, the air is moving into the low from all directions, curves to the right because of the Coriolis. So these we get counterclockwise motion around each of these, each of these uh, regions. Um, this is the jet stream here, you know, so there's streakiness here, there's areas of high speed and then lower speed. And we get, look at this waviness here, you know, in the ridges here and look at the trough here. This trough is almost going to break off and separate into a low pressure area, you know, and these will join up here perhaps. Um, but you get an extreme waviness in the jet stream. This is, these are a couple other depictions. So look at these ridges and trough. You know, a, a small ridge, trough. Okay, so we're seeing that type of thing. Um, as I go down, you can see the volume trend over the years here. There's lots of data here. Um, this is the sea ice thickness. Um, so the red areas, the, the red, this is in January 31st, okay? Um, right, so the, the red areas were the thickest areas, but now, you know, in the middle of the summer, we've lost most of that sea ice. Greenland uh, melt, of course, as the whole re Arctic is warmer, Greenland's melting more quickly. Um, now, what is missing from here is the Navy data. This is sea ice temperature. Um, the, the Navy data is missing, the, okay, um, which shows the ice motion. Um, and uh, so where did it go? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, let's go, so now if I go to Arctic Sea Ice blog, okay, Nevin's, Nevin's blog. This is a post that he put. So it's the 2016 Arctic Cyclone, update one. Um, so it just shows the, this shows the big gaps in the sea ice. This shows the low pressure area. 968 millibar right in the dead center there. The winds are going, as you go out, the pressure's increasing. The winds are circulating this way. Okay, and he talks about, you know, there hasn't been a marked effect on the ices yet, but there, this, on, on the forum, there was a drop of 170K reported for one day. You know, a century drop is over 100K. Um, so this is this year, it's showing a, a sharp downtrend um, in the uh, in the sea ice, so we're going to expect a lot of this uh, as this cyclone continues. Third largest August daily drop in the last decade, um, and this shows an animation. So August fourteenth, August twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, and then we back go back to the twelfth. So you can see the ice actually vanishing before your very eyes here. So you know, if we had cyclones like this going out, then there's going to be almost there's going to be essentially nothing left. You know, so how many cyclones will there be? Well, we've got three or four days of this guy, you know, weakening. Then we've got you know more coming up, and there's lots of cyclones also located around the whole northern region. Um, so keep a close eye. You know, this shows the pressures of different storms. So the central pressure, um, and uh, so you know. The previous deepest, here, here's, uh, you know, in, in 2012, the, the cyclone was reached 966 hexapascal, lowest on record, beat out the previous deepest in 1995. And then uh, here we go, in a third one in 1991, 969. So if this is punching in at 968, we're right up there in the record, um, record lows. This is showing as we go from this August 17th through the 22nd, the forecast, it's showing we're getting a little bit of a weakening. You know, the storm loses strength, but doesn't fade away completely. And then it's showing beyond six days, a reintensification of the storm. And if you take an 11 uh, day forecast, you know, it even shows 
that um, you know it shows how the low kind of uh, starts spreading out into two lows, and then uh, you know how it's changing um, on as as you move out. So you know what will what what will this do to the ice? Can we label it the Great Arctic Cyclone? Yeah, I think so. But uh, you know maybe it's just an all right Arctic Cyclone according to this. So. Now what I did is I go to the, if I look at the previous blog, so this update five, which I've got here, um, this is showing the data from a few days previous. And what you can see is, uh, you know, once again, you can see this is uh, August 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and, and then it cycles through. So you can see how the sea ice is affected and uh, these other graphs here, you can look at the details. This is the, the pressure, um, you know, how the, how the pressure is forming over time, this animation. Um, so it shows, uh, this is 0812 and 0730. So it shows from the end of July to, um, to the 12th, you know, how the, how the low, where it came from, you know, so what's happening? So you can see it here. You know, you can see this coming up and joining with it and then it moving up into the Arctic. So you can see what's kind of happening. So the dipole kind of forms into a monopole and strengthens. You know, and this shows some more images. Um, 969 is what was predicted and that's what we reached. And, uh, you know, these are temperatures, sea surface temperatures, really hot all, all along. Okay, so now have, let's have a look. Now we'll go to the, um, now we're going to the forums here, Arctic Sea Ice Forum. You can just Google these things and find it. So we're looking at, um, this is the Arctic Sea Ice Forum, Cryosphere Arctic Sea Ice, the 2016 melting season. If you go there, I clicked on 82. So these are the most recent posts um, that are going on just tonight. Um, and you can see here, you know, some meteorology of what's happening with the weather. And if I go on to 81, I got busy server, so I just put it in here. And you can see uh, basically what's happening here is um, there's lots of information here on this storm. So this shows you an Earth null school of the region showing winds in excess of 70 kilometers an hour. And this is from August 15th, okay? Um, and you can go through, I'll just pick out some of the main things here. Um, okay, this is the sea ice thickness, you know, back in June. Um, let's get some stuff here. Okay, wave heights, okay. I already mentioned that, you know, you get the high winds there, you get open water around the ice, you get very, very high waves. You know, the wave height is two, three, four meters, and the ice thickness is only a meter or so. So that will propagate very far under the ice, and it breaks it up into smaller and smaller pieces, which increases the surface area greatly, which increases the melting greatly. But when you get lots of melting, then the water kind of spreads out and keeps it cooler there, unless you get upwelling from below, because the water is warmer from below. Um, some pressure diagrams of the low pressure, some more of these animations here. Um, this is pretty impressive, showing the um, Earth Null School view. You know, just Google Earth Null School and uh, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, and then, oh, Jim Hunt grabbed the image of the wrong cyclone from his hard drive. Okay, well, it looks like this is the right cyclone. He probably grabbed the 2012 cyclone here. You know, make sure you get the right one, Jim. Uh, okay, so uh, going back down here, um, I want to sh come to a particular diagram here. I talked about the Navy data being gone. Well, look at this. This is the type of data I'm talking about. This is the Navy data. Um, so that's the pressure chart, and this is showing ice motion. So the black areas and the thick lines, uh, the thick arrows, long arrows, is the uh, ice swirling around, um, and um, this is massive. Now I'm going to. There's going to be a part two to this video, and I'll continue it here.